My name is Wendy Blundell and I'm the Director for the Institution of Civil Engineers in Northern Ireland. ICE is a UK-based organisation with approximately 80,000 members drawn from across the civil engineering sector. It's an educational body and a qualifying body, but also a leading source of expertise in transport, water supply, flood management, waste and energy. I'd like to speak to you for two minutes about the resilience of our energy supply in Northern Ireland. Imagine somebody telling you that in 20 years from now, almost everything you do in life you will do differently. This is how fundamental the transition to a low carbon economy will be. Many of the changes in the way we generate the energy we use will be profound. The UK has adopted some of the most ambitious climate change targets in the world. And the Northern Ireland executives target a 40% of, of electricity demand being provided from renewable sources by 2020 will still require significant infrastructure investment, both because the current grid is ageing and because a greater investment in wind farms is likely to require reinforcement of the distribution lines. The limited gas infrastructure in Northern Ireland also serves as a barrier to economic growth and there is uncertainty over future energy security in Northern Ireland from 2016 and that's as a result of a drop in generation capacity and a lack of progress in upgrading the Moyle interconnector linking the electricity grids of Northern Ireland and Scotland and the North-South interconnector. There are also technical and reliability reasons for an operational limit on the contribution that wind power can make to the overall generation requirement and experimental trials are still ongoing for tidal and wave energy. So simply this is not going to be enough. The country faces a serious energy crisis. Within a decade there's a large fraction of the UK's antiquated power generating capacity is due to close. If it's not replaced we face a nightmarish future of power shortages and blackouts. In the meantime we desperately need to reduce this country's greenhouse gas emissions and 90% of our energy currently comes from fossil fuels. These enormous twin challenges mean we need to get real about energy. At the moment the public discussion is intensely emotional, polarised and mistrustful. This is particularly the case for nuclear power and now fracking. Every option is strongly opposed. The public seems to be anti-wind, anti-coal, anti-waste energy, anti-nuclear and now anti-fracking. We can't continue to be anti-everything. Time is running out.